So what can, though that's our toolkit, right? Those are the sum of the farming practices that we can use. Um, so what can we do as citizens? And I want to say citizens as opposed to as consumers or whatever, because I feel like when we think of ourselves as consumers, that limits our perspective on who we are and what we can do. So the first thing is we need to figure out how these kinds of systems work around here, especially on a commercial scale, on a large scale. How do we do it? What's going to work here? Let's find out. Um, the next piece is I would love to see somebody develop a carbon-friendly certification system. We have organic certification, we have all kinds of certification. In my mind, this would be A, on the practices, is it being grown with carbon sequestering practices, but B, is it local? Because it doesn't matter if it's grown on a tree in California and shipped here. That is not a carbon-friendly certified product. So it, we look at both and somehow balance both of those things in an overall score of some kind. Um, I, I think we can't just be growing stuff, though. I think we have to be involved in these movements. We have to plug into 350.org or whatever, get involved in climate justice. We have to bring the, the regenerative farming model to the climate world, and we need to generally still say, oh my god, America, climate change is actually happening. Guess what? And it's a big deal. Um, and we need to fight the propaganda that these fossil fuel companies are putting out. If you think about what the tobacco companies were doing 20, 30 years ago, saying tobacco doesn't cause cancer, hmm. the fossil fuel companies have hired the same PR firms, <laughs> and they have thousands of times more money than the tobacco companies ever had. That's why people in the United States don't think climate change is really happening, because these guys bought us out. And we have to resist them, and we have to resist them with intelligence and tact and calm. And sometimes we have to resist them with a little more than calm. <laughs> um, uh, which gets me to my next point, which is we need to replace unresponsive economic and political institutions. There are some institutions and economic systems that are sort of in the way right now. <laughs> and um, we really only have a couple decades to do something about this. And uh, we really can't allow anybody's short-sighted greed or, um, or uh, ignorance or really genuine dysfunction to keep us from <laughs> saving the planet and safeguarding it for ourselves and for the future. So I, I think we're going to have to do some replacing of some things in some fashion. <laughs> 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 Woo! Woo! I, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to plug a couple of upcoming things that are happening. And if you want to spend a more significant amount of time, uh, January 17 to February 5th is the Carbon Farming Workshop uh, over at the Pfeiffer Center in New York. And uh, the lineup is very stellar of the people who are going to be presenting there, even though I'm on the list. <laughs> Don't hold that against me. Um, uh, Wes Jackson, Dave Jackie, Elaine Ingham, Joel Salatin, Darren Dougherty, the reigning king of Key Lime from Australia, will be there. It's a really, really interesting opportunity. And it's in the winter, so if you farm, go. <laughs> um, and uh, last, if you want to read some more stuff, I've got this lovely website, perennialsolutions.org, that's got lots and lots of um, links and resources and articles and videos about all this, and I will be continuing to post more and more information on there, using that as my, uh, my uh, uh, soapbox. <laughs> <laughs>